Good morning. This is uh, Pete from A Bit Twisted. So, got done doing some thread at home. This happens to be this bobbin here. And it came out to be 1,265 yards of singles thread of this this flax here came out to this not this much to this but uh, this was half a strick of Maria's flax this is some flax that I did a while back ended up putting it on a bobbin and you can see kind of how fuzzy it is compared to what I'm doing today so what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to count how many yards I have and then I'm going to split it and then I'm going to ply it and I'm going to ply it wet and then we're going to compare what this looks like after it's been plied to what you're seeing here on this bobbin. So right now if I put this on a, on a loom this would just be a, a mess just because there's just so much fuzzy bits on it. I just I just wouldn't want to spin with or weave with this at all. Um, what we should get is something similar to this. And this is something we can use to make aprons, towels, whatever. And this would be used for making fine cloth. This other stuff is a bit coarser. You know, it's a little bit, a little bit coarser of a cloth there. And um, so. I'm going to try this set up with this thread here. Except this is uh, two threads per dent um, and one for the warp. And then, um, so I'm going to do it with two threads for the warp per dent and then two threads on the on the weft and we're going to do another another pattern here um, on my one loom and see how that turns out if it turns out good then this is going to be used for making some some big pieces of cloth so that's what I have so let's go get done with this and then we'll revisit this here shortly and then I'm just gonna go ahead and ply it I've got my sponge is one of these super absorbent sponges here and I just have have it pressed onto here and it just absorbs the water is what it does so we're gonna go ahead and stirring this up here And so since I since I ply or since I spin counterclockwise, I'm going to ply clockwise. I'm just going to get everything started here. Run everything through my hands here. Get everything good good and started, and then I'm just going to. everything started and I'm just gonna so I separate and kind of press the thread into the sponge and that helps straighten out the fuzzy bits as it's starting to soak up water and then once it passes under my thumb it uh, 
plies it together and then I just keep feeding it in. So it just makes kind of a rope is basically what we're doing. Just like just like yarn. Yarn is still just a a rope. It's a two ply rope or a three ply rope, whatever you want to call it. And so that's that's how I do this. Just a real simple it's a real simple setup. But if you have fuzzy linen this will help because what it does is it flattens the fuzz and then interlocks that in between the ply so it just holds it that way um, eventually it may over time it may kind of get a little fuzzy again but then you have well used cloth and then in the weaving or knitting or whatever you do with it will um, lock other things in even more if there's still some fuzzy bits. And, uh, and plied thread still makes some really nice cloth so you don't have to use singles. To me singles seems to be more trouble than it's worth on the loom. But we're going to see with this new, this new fine stuff that I've been doing. But I just wanted to show this one more time. Just a quick, a quick ply that's totally wet. So that thread that's coming up plied is just saturated with water. Um, it's not just lightly damp. It's saturated because the sponge just soaks up water and we'll release that water right into the as the in, into the thread as I let it drag across it. So let me finish this and with the magic of video we will be back in just a second. So now we have 128 yards of plied fuzzy singles thread. We took singles thread, applied it wet, and still has a little fuzz on it, but not enough to be a hindrance for weaving. So you can see all the comparison between the three. So this is a two ply, single, this is really thin stuff here. Um, So as you can see this single little thread right here. And that's what we do. So I'm gonna take the take this to make the fine take the other, which is like this. This is the coarser flax. This is actually from Egypt here that I haven't done anything with. I just left it all tied up. And that's going to produce this. So these are still good and they still make fine fabric like this fabric here. So this was made with coarse fabric like this over here or coarse fiber 
Um, so don't discount coarse fiber in super fine. Um, it makes it makes a fine cloth. So, and these are and these are applied uh, two ply for both warp and weft on this piece of cloth. I'm just trying to see what singles are like on the loom. So we're going to get started with that. I'm actually going to take some of this singles here. I'm going to count it out, see how much I have, and then I'm going to warp it onto my loom, but I'm using two strands per Dent. So this is slightly thicker than this, but still a really fine. So we'll see what this does, and we'll be back later. So I'm over here at the studio, and I decided to try set up my uh, loom here. That I've just recently recently acquired, um, got set up. And I'm using some really thin, some really thin thread here. And what I've done is I got a 15 dent reed, and I'm doubling up my thread per dent. And I kind of strung this up just like you would do a rigid heddle. And I used a rattle in the back to hold. So I got two inches going here. So I got um, uh, 32 threads, 32 doubled threads. And I'm just going to make a, a narrow strip, just a little over a little over a yard long, and uh, as a test. And so I wanted to show that I strung it up. It's coming out the back. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to tighten it up a bit and roll it around the front until I can get it attached to my to the warp beam. And then once I get on the warp beam, I'll tie it up to the warp beam and then um, and then tighten it up there and we'll start weaving. So I think I'm pretty much ready to do this. Um, take, take a little bit yet uh, to set it up. It's late for me so I have to head back home. I have work to do in the morning. And um, so even though this is a 15 dent reed, I have 16 threads uh, for two inches, give or take a very, very small amount, you know? So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, I'm going to do a plain weave for part of it, and then I want to do a um, uh, tweed, see how that works out, and then do a plain weave at the end. And um, if I'm feeling good with it, then we'll go ahead with uh, singles threads. If I don't like the singles threads, um, as thin as I have them, uh, if they're still giving me trouble, then I'm going to go ahead and ply them and just use very thin plied. And so over here, I'm going to swing my light over here. Um, I have some very thin plied and this is still very very thin threads anyway so that would be a suitable a suitable thickness for some for, for some nice fabric and I'll loom this up the, the standard way rather than the uh, then doubling it up. And so I'm just using this whirl here. 
and then this is just going to be kind of a narrow so I've got um, one two three four, six inches so far I might get another inch or two and just and just use that as a as a short narrow band as well for for testing just so I can kind of get used to the loom and that's what this is about it's just kind of getting things set up learning process but just wanted to show that I do have it up I don't have anything tensioned everything's just kind of hanging loose um, we'll get that all tensioned up here real soon and uh, and get cracking I'll do some uh, video of the uh, weaving as I go thanks for watching bye